I've just finished editing the video you're about to watch and it's restoring this classic Stanley metal body five and a quarter. But instead of doing it just in two parts and leaving a lot out, I've decided I'm actually going to break this into three videos, all of which have been uploaded. But in part one, I'll show you how to square and clean up the body of the plane itself. In part two, we'll disassemble the plane and clean all the bits. And in part three, we'll put it all together, sharpen the blade, tune it up and actually use it. So please enjoy part one as we start to square off this plane and I'll show you from the moment it arrives in the post. G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. And I thought I'd just throw an extra one in this week. I ordered a, a plane that was um, a plane that I wanted, but it wasn't complete, from eBay. And I've just turned it up, so I'm going to be really brave. Tread where wise men fear to tread. And I thought I'd open it and we'll repair it live. So I've got a rough idea what it looks like. It's missing a handle and it's got a bit of rust on it. And it's a five and a quarter. So here goes. Seems reasonably well wrapped to start with. I like the way they've wrapped it. And there it is. And I've got to say credit to the bloke who put it online because it actually looks like the pictures do. I've bought some in the past and they look not too bad and when you get them they're a bit shoddy. But as I said, it's a bit loose, missing a handle. That's okay because I've got a few number fours floating around. And there's a rosewood knob. So, I've got all prepared here, hoping that it wasn't too bad and we could actually film this. What I want to do is clean up the sides. You can't feel it, but it's pretty rough down there. First of all, I'll check it for square. A lot of times you'll find the cheeks are out on these, so we'll see, see how good this one is. That's pretty good. This one's a little bit out, but that could be because um, the grime and muck on it. Okay, first thing I do, grab a sheet of glass. Be careful if it's broken glass like this, you don't cut yourself. And because this isn't too bad, I'm going to start off with a sheet of 120, I think. If this was really badly pitted and really rusty, number one, I wouldn't have bought it. But if it turned up like that, I'd start with an 80 grit or maybe even a 60 grit. But this isn't too bad, so I'm going to start off with a, a 120 grit. And I'm going to leave everything intact. I'm going to retract the blade, which was already retracted. The frog's a bit loose, isn't it? So what I'll do is tighten that up. I'm not worried about the back handle at this stage. Blade could do with a bit of work too, it's a bit... Here you go. But anyway, what I want to do is clean up the sole and the side cheeks. And to do that, to make sure it's square with what everything belongs in there, that's why I'm leaving the frog in, I'm leaving the iron, the cap iron, and the chip breaker. So everything's intact. So when I clean this, it's going to clean the way it's going to plane when everything's there. Big mistake a lot of people do is they pull all the accessories out and then they're just left with the, uh, the sole basically and they clean that up and then when they put everything back together there's a bit of a, a twist sometimes. So doing it this way, you know it's going to be okay. Now this is just 
kerosene or paraffin oil, put it over the wet and dry, and eventually there'll be enough caro underneath it and the paper will stay still. In the meantime, I'm just going to hang on to it. Much the same as I do box lids. If I go 10 ways that way, I'll go 10 ways the other way and then you rotate it and move it around. So you're using all the paper and you're spreading the load of the sole evenly. See how after a while the paper sticks so you don't have to hang on to it. Very similar to the way a veneer hammer works with high glue and veneer. We've created a vacuum between the glass and the sandpaper and atmospheric pressure is holding it in place. Now if we look at that, it's pretty good. A little bit at the toes missing and a little bit on the heel and there's a bit of a chip on the heel there but I'm not too fussed about that. So that's coming up really quite well. Little mark over the mouth. Sometimes you find if they've put too much pressure on the cap iron, the blade will actually bulge this part of the plane out, but this one seems to be okay, so that's good. Now I'll try the cheeks. And I'm going to try and keep this at 90 degrees. Not that I intend to use this as a shooting plane, but if you're using a shooting board and you're going to use this plane on it, obviously you've got to have 90 degrees, or else you're not going to get a nice clean shoot when you use it in a shooting board your timber is going to be a little bit off if it's not a true 90 degrees now quite frankly that's looking pretty good i might just put another sheet of 120 on there and we'll give it a final lick before we move up the grades but Pretty happy with that. Let's check that for square. Whoops. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. one side and I might use that bit a little bit later on so I won't throw that totally away. Now I'll try some 180. What I'm endeavouring to do now is the scratches at the 120 left we'll want to bring those down so I might go through to 400, 600 we'll just see how it looks. You find once you've done the initial grind or flattening, these other steps are a lot quicker because all you're doing, as I said before, is taking the scratches out from the grit before. Figure of eights if you want, circles, reverse circles, up and down, side to side, doesn't really matter. You can see that's really starting to come ahead a lot nicer. Look, if you've got a plane and it's got a couple of really deep pits in it, it really doesn't make that much difference to the plane. You could always fill it with something or other. It's when the, the sole is very pitted that you do run into problems, but the odd one or two pits is it's fine. You can tell when you're getting there because these edges get very, very sharp. Down there. Okay, that's 180. Now we'll touch it to 240. 
And this is the same process I've done with all of those planes up there. Believe me, the number seven and the number eight take a long time to do. But you've only got to do it once, and providing you're careful and don't drop your tools or lend them to someone else who does, you'll never have to do this again. Just look after them, use them. And there you can see that's really quite acceptable. And that's uh, at 2.40. But I might push the envelope. What else have I got here? Uh, that need one of those. Might give it a go with a bit of 400, then we might stop at 600. Not necessary. And quite frankly, at 240, that is a lot smoother than when you bought a new out of the box. But if they're your tools, you look after them, you have them the way you want them. I'm not advocating you buff them and get a mirror shine on them because that's not going to make any difference. There's something nice about using tools that are tuned just the way you like them. And that to me is more than acceptable. I do have sheets of 600 and 800 there, but quite frankly, that'll do me. So I stopped at 400. You could have stopped at 240. It would have been just as good. Well, as I said in the video, I think that is the hardest part over. So in part two, we pull all the bits and pieces out, clean them up, lubricate them, fix anything that needs fixing, and make it all ready to go back together. So please join me in part two of making or restoring the Stanley 5 and a quarter hand plane.